Hey, and welcome back to the channel. This week, we're going to take a look at the top seven V60 recipes on YouTube and choose the best recipe. I think this will be a lot of fun, so let's hit that B-roll and then get started. So for this video, I thought it'd be fun to search YouTube for V60 recipes and pick the top seven based on views. I did exclude videos that included multiple methods or comparisons. So this is just for coffee YouTubers who have shown off either their own method that they have created or a popular method that they use. We'll go in order of the number of views on YouTube for the first six. And then the seventh is a little bit different. So we'll do that one last. Now, each of these videos go in depth explaining out the recipe, so I'm linking each recipe below, which you should go check out. For the testing, I used the clear plastic V60, and while it's not the prettiest V60 out there, it does hold the heat the best. And the coffee I purchased is from a local roaster, Quills Coffee, and I use their single origin washed Ethiopian. When we're talking about the best recipe, obviously this is highly subjective, but I thought it'd still be fun to compare the different recipes. Throughout the video, I'll walk through the recipe while showing some B-roll to help explain some of the different processes, but I won't necessarily get into the why of everything in the recipe, so you should go check out the individual videos for that. And there will be a link below listing out all of the recipes and of course a link to each video that I encourage you to watch. At the end of the video, we'll talk about the different recipes, what I liked about them, and what I would crown the best V60 recipe on YouTube. I also want to thank Prima Coffee for loaning the Commandante C40, which I use for the recipes. They didn't ask me to say anything about them, but I've been using Prima Coffee for years to buy coffee gear, learn about different types of equipment, and just get questions answered in general. They're really more than an online coffee store, but they really go out of their way with education and customer support. I have affiliate link in the caption, but I encourage you to go check them out. I'm actually working on a high-end grinder review, which the Commandante C40 will be a part of. And that's the main reason I have it on loan with Prima. Because many of the recipes refer to the amount of clicks on the Commandante for grind size. While this is not a foolproof way for consistency, I thought it would help for this video. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on that review video. And before we start diving into recipes, I'll be sure to put chapter markers in the timeline so you can skip around to the different recipes if you would like. So first, we're going to look at the most popular V60 recipe here on YouTube, which is from the king of coffee himself, James Hoffman. Hoffman introduced this recipe in August of 2019, and at the time of this recording, it had a whopping 2.5 million views. So much commentary has been spilled on this recipe in his Discord, Reddit, and of course, many other places on the internet. So no doubt many of you watching this video have at least seen his video or tried out his recipe. So Hoffman recommends 60 grams of coffee per liter of water, which comes out to a one to 16.66666, one to 16.66 ratio. So in his video, he does 30 grams of coffee to 500 grams of water while recommending a grind size on the finer end of medium or basically try to go as fine as you can until your coffee becomes bitter and then dial it back a bit. One thing that is interesting about these different videos is the different ways they prepare the coffee bed. As we continue to look at these recipes, we'll see some slight differences. And at the end of the video, I'll let you know what I think about these different bed preps. Hoffman recommends creating a slight well in the middle of the grounds. After doing that, you're going to gently pour 60 grams of water for the bloom, then aggressively swirl in a circular motion to make sure that the water is evenly mixed. You're going to then rest for 30 to 45 seconds, then pour 60% of the liquid within one minute and 15 seconds, providing a bit of agitation. This should total 300 grams of water. And after this, you're going to add 100% of the brew weight in the next 30 seconds, which in this case is 200 grams of water. After this, grab a spoon and stir in one direction and then the other direction and give it a final swirl. I found this to provide a balanced and well extracted cup, although it is easy to make a bitter brew by grinding too fine. Additionally, I felt like I had less extracted and flavorful cup if I was using this for a smaller batch, like 15 to 20 grams. So it seems that this excels at a little bit higher end. The next video is seven years old at the time of this recording, and it is from Elemental Coffee, and it has more than 700,000 views and is simply titled, 
how to brew a V60. This video actually took me back several years because I am pretty sure this is one of the first YouTube recipe videos that I watched. It looked quite familiar and the brewing method is reminiscent of my early days brewing with the V60. So this recipe is pretty simple. It calls for 26 grams of coffee to 340 grams of water, which is about a one to 13 ratio, which is quite high compared to the other recipes. They recommend what they say is uh, either 16 to 18 on the Barata Encore and label it as a medium grind. I found this comparable to be closer to what I would label as a medium fine grind, closer to around 600 to 700 microns if you're into that. There's really no bed preparation with this recipe except to just level out the bed and then add 40 grams for the bloom using small concentric circles while avoiding pouring on the outside on the filter. Wait about 40 seconds for the bloom and then add the rest of the water 300 grams in slow concentric circles. At the end of the pour, give it a quick stir, and they say it should last about two minutes, 30 seconds. Here, I wanna say one thing about what is known by TDT or total drawdown time. The total drawdown time is going to be affected by a number of different factors from the way the coffee was processed to the roast style, to potentially even the environment that the coffee is stored in. Instead of worrying about the total drawdown time, let taste be the biggest determiner for whether the cup of coffee is good or not. I know this may sound obvious, but I see far too many people worried about the timing of the brew and letting that affect their perceived taste of the coffee. All right, I digress. So let's take a look at Spromethius's hybrid V60 technique. This video has around 74,000 views at the time of recording. He recommends using the Cafec light roast paper filter, which is quite a bit thicker than your typical V60 filters from Hario. This will make your brew quite a bit slower. He suggests that the standard one to 16 ratio of coffee to water and going with 18 grams of coffee at a medium coarseness. Spromethius definitely has the most advanced bed preparation out of all these methods opting for using what is called the Kubomi method. In order to achieve this, you're going to add a stir stick or something circular with smooth sides to the V60, then add your grounds on top. Lift it slightly, then make three full rotations toward the middle of the grounds so you get this kind of swirl looking bed. According to him, this is to help saturate the grounds of coffee with water. You're then going to pour 50 grams of water to bloom and then stir from the center using a spiral for about 30 seconds for the bloom to happen. After that, you pour 123 grams of water in a circular pattern in about a minute's time. Then pour in the center of the coffee, trying to match the pace of the brewed coffee exiting the dripper for a total of 288 grams. After this, swirl the coffee to flatten the bed and wait for the drawdown to complete. This method is pretty much by far the most technical and by the book, starting with an advanced bed preparation. So here's a good time to stop and just say that if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and give it a like. And while you're at it, comment your favorite V60 recipe. I would love to hear from you. And of course, if you're interested in more coffee videos, gear reviews, and tips, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I do have some exciting videos planned out for the future that you're not going to want to miss. Okay. Next up is Kyle Rosell's video on the 4-6 method and technique. This method comes from the 2016 World Brewers Champion Tetsu Kasuya. In his presentation at the World Brewers Cup, he states that the 4-6 method begins by dividing the total water into 40% and 60%. He goes on to say you pour the first 40% in two pours, and then decide how many pours you want to make for the last 60%. He says the first two pours decide the balance of the acidity and the sweetness. The remainder number of pours will decide the strength of the coffee. Kyle follows his 4-6 method, but adjusts the championship recipe slightly for simplicity in his video. The recipe Kyle uses is 20 grams to 300 grams of water at 197 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to want to grind fairly coarse, much coarser than you would suspect. So if you're using the fellow Ode, he says to use it at setting Six. So the first two pours is 40% of the water, which would be 120 grams of water total. You then divide this by two. Tetsu says that if your first pour has more water, then the acidity will be strong. But if the second pour has more, then it will increase the sweetness. For simplicity's sake, Kyle opts for even pours of 60 grams of water for each pour. The key to this method is to only start the next pour after all the liquids have dropped into the decanter, which helps with the extraction. So this method sounds the most confusing, and it is if you try to keep it all in your head, but if you follow Kyle's recipe and just do the even pours, you're gonna be just fine. So I did try testing the theory of increasing the acidity and sweetness of the coffee by changing the first two pours. This was not a scientific test, but I did brew the same coffee three different ways. One with more water in the first and another with more water in the second, and then another with the same amount. Honestly, I could not tell a difference between the different methods. And I will say that the most basic one that Kyle lays out is probably the easiest to brew with. 
and did produce a nice, sweet, clean cup of coffee. All right, now it's time to look at April Coffee's recipe for the B60. This video has around 56,000 views at the time of recording. This recipe is very similar to the one that uses a coarse grind setting and much lower temperature that Kyle was talking about. For them, they recommend 13 grams to 200 grams of water, which is a one to 15 ratio and a coarse grind, which is around 30 clicks on the Commandante. They state in the video that brewing coffee is often best at the most simple recipe. This recipe is no exception. You're going to do a 50 gram bloom for about 30 seconds and then pour three even pours of 50 grams each with about 30 seconds in between. At the end, just give it a quick swirl and you're done. Now let's take a look at Lance Hedrick's method. Lance is the head of wholesale at Onyx Coffee. And by the way, if you're interested, I did an interview with Lance on my podcast, Freshly Brewed, the coffee podcast for home brewers. Related, I would also say that I did an interview with Kyle Roselle for a different episode. There's a link in the description to each of them. You should go check them out. Lance recommends a one to 17 ratio, which is ideal for a 15 to 25 gram brew. I should note that Lance's video goes in depth about all sorts of variables and ways to modify the recipe for your own taste. But this video, I'm just going to go with his standard recipe. Lance also has a video on extraction theory for doing pour overs, which I would also recommend. So he recommends a medium fine grind or 24 clicks on the Commandante. For the bed preparation, he recommends a divot for less compression of the coffee grounds by starting with a stir stick on the outside and moving it to the center and putting up the grinds up the wall a bit. Now to brewing, he recommends that you do two blooms to fully extract the CO2 from the coffee. The first bloom is 50 grams, then spins somewhat aggressively, then wait about 30 seconds, and then do a second bloom of 50 grams and spin and wait about 30 seconds again. After you do your two blooms, you're going to divide the second two pours by two so in this case, two pours of 120 grams. For the pour, you're going to pour aggressively at what he calls behind center to agitate the grounds, and then you're going to spin after each one. This brew provided a lot of clarity in the cup, but for me personally, I do prefer a ratio about one to 15 for this method. The extraction is high and the flavor is good, but I do prefer my coffee a bit stronger. The final recipe is the most unique as it utilizes a completely different method that comes from old school Japanese baristas and has been making a bit of a comeback as late. The company that makes the filters that Spromethius recommended, Cafec, actually recommends this method with their filters and on their website. The Coffee Chronicler video has 68,000 views at the time of this posting. So you're going to use a one to 15 ratio with 20 grams of coffee and 300 grams of water at a fairly coarse grind size at around 30 clicks on the Commandante. You're first gonna do a fairly standard 50 gram bloom and then wait 45 seconds. Now the second pour is unique about what is called the osmotic flow method. You're going to very gently pour 100 grams in the center as slow as you can. No circles and as little agitation. He recommends that you keep the kettle close to your body and slowly pour. At the end of pouring 150 grams total, you're going to very slowly expand the circle, rotating with your feet rather than your arms and never touch the paper. You're going for as little agitation as possible. This recipe by far has the most body in the cup, but I felt it was a bit under extracted in my taste test. It also didn't provide the clarity that the other coffees had. Let's talk about the different recipes and what I liked and what I didn't like about each of them. First, you'll notice that several of the recipes have different ways of preparing the coffee bed from making a small well in the center to a divot to the Kabomi method to doing nothing. But most of these also incorporated some sort of swirl to help fully saturate the grounds. And personally, I'm not sure if you're doing the swirl, how much the pre-bed preparation actually affects the brew. I think the most important thing is to make sure that the grounds are fully saturated for that bloom phase to release the CO2 from the coffee. Now, I would encourage you to test this on your own, You know, try different ways, and if you like one of them, stick with it. Second, a couple of the recipes incorporate swirls to help keep the water bed even and aid in extraction. Channels can begin to occur in your coffee bed, so a swirl kind of helps reset everything. Third, you'll notice that the recipes with medium to medium fine grind coarseness recommend typically using higher water temperatures, while the two coarser ones used a much lower water temperature. And fourth, they ranged in the amount of complexity from bed preparation to the amount of water in each pour to how many pours you do. 
This is where I'd like to talk about the best recipe because I do think that the complexity factor does play into it, especially when you're just getting started. A more complex recipe is going to be more difficult to repeat on a daily basis and have that consistency in that brew that you want. But if you're anything like me, you don't make the same recipe every day. So first, I did not find that the Coffee Chronicler's osmotic flow method to bring out the best in the coffee. I found it had a little bit too high of body for my taste and didn't bring out any of the complexity and clarity that I enjoy in my coffee. This also goes for the elemental coffee recipe. And while it's the most simple, I felt that the final cup was lacking in some nuance. I would say that Hoffman, Hedrick, and Spromethius's recipe are all very similar and I find similar results with them. I think Hedrick's recipe with the two pours and spins after the double bloom worked well for 15 to 25 gram coffee range and Hoffman's method worked a bit better for larger doses. Then we get to Kyle Roselle and the 4-6 method and April Coffee's method. Each of these used a very coarse grind and a lower water temperature. I know that Hoffman talks about using water right off the boil for better extraction of light roast, but the coarse coffee and the pulse pour method with these, I found to be a very good combination. In reality, both of these recipes are very similar, but the presentation of April's coffee recipe is the most simple. Both are very simple and easily repeatable day in and day out. So for my taste with a very sweet and juicy coffee, I would turn to one of these recipes. So the best taking in all factors would be one of these two. It's also very easy to repeat and keep all your variables the same. But like I said in the beginning, this is a very subjective test. I would love to hear what your favorite recipe is in the comments. Have you tried these recipes? What do you like or not like about them? please let me know below. As a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would sure help out the growth and sustainability of this channel. So if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe. I will see you all next week.